Good day. The main reason why our planet has life is that we have everything in right amounts. But in recent times, our own planet is paying the price of our advancements. This paves the way for the topic of this presentation, biological fixation of carbon dioxide from industrial flue gas using microalgae. I am Praveen Randhania, representing my colleague Charita and myself. This topic will be covered under five subsections, starting with the introduction and the process of microalgae carbon dioxide fixation. Then we'll discuss about the techno-economic assessment and the life cycle assessment of the process. And finally, we'll look into the future aspects of this technology. Let's start with the introduction. Now you all might be wondering why we need to limit carbon dioxide. It's because carbon dioxide is the major greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. In fact, it is more than two-thirds of the entire greenhouse gas emissions. Current CO2 concentration is around 416 ppm, and scientists believe that if this value reaches 430 ppm, humankind would have to face severe disasters. We are almost at the point, and we need to act now. So the obvious solution is to drastically reduce the CO2 emission which seems like very hard to reach as evident by the ever rising CO2 concentration in the atmosphere despite of the awareness it has. Therefore, we now have to look at methods to capture CO2 from the atmosphere. There are few methods to capture CO2 such as absorption, cryogenic separation, membrane separation and adsorption. But due to high cost of equipment and most importantly, high energy consumption affects the sustainability and applicability in large scale. These limitations shed light to the world of possibilities when using microalgae to capture CO2. CO2 is used to cultivate microalgae which are much better at utilizing CO2 and microalgal biomass can be used to make many products which are in very high demand. Simply put, microalgae can be used to make money out of CO2 rich air. As now we have an understanding of the requirement of microalgae to fix CO2, let's look at the process closely. We'll look into how CO2 is captured by microalgae. Microalgae can be cultivated either in an open system or a closed system. There is an important term we need to understand and that is carbon concentrating mechanism or CCM. CO2 need to be transported to carboxysome and in significant concentration for the Rubisco enzyme to convert CO2 into valuable products. Next is the parameters considered for the cultivation. Since microalgae are living organisms, it is very crucial that we need to supply the right amounts of each parameter based on the microalgae type. Most common parameters considered are carbon dioxide level, nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides, pH, temperature and light intensity. There is an optimum value for each of these parameters where the microalgae can grow. Finally, the aeration strategy. As we are capturing CO2, it is very important to understand on how we are supplying CO2 to the media. This is termed as the aeration strategy. There are three aspects we need to look at. First, the sparging mechanism. It can be done as continuous supply of CO2 or intermittently. This has to choose based on the microalgae type. However, in general, intermittent is preferred as it helps to maintain the pH of the media while supplying carbon dioxide. Secondly, the aeration rate. This too depends on the microalgae type and there is an optimum rate for each microalgae type where they can grow well. Thirdly, the aerated bubble size. Micro bubbles are preferred as they increase CO2 transfer. Once all the parameters are in their optimum levels, microalgae can be cultivated successfully. Now we have to look at two critical aspects of the entire process. They are the techno-economic assessment and the life cycle assessment. We also compare the two cultivation systems, the open system and the closed system to see if any system is better than the other. First, we'll go through the techno-economic assessment. There are three metrics we look at. They are the revenue obtained, capital cost, and the operating cost. 
when biomass cultivation is considered, capital cost is significantly lower in open systems. When operating costs are considered, operating costs depend on the microalgae species and energy consumption. Also, operating costs too generally higher in closed systems, majorly because of the need to provide lighting. It seems like the open systems are better in terms of the cost, but it is not entirely the complete picture. Microalgae biomass can be used to make valuable products. In that sense, if the product is of high economic value, for example like astaxanthi, cultivating microalgae under closed systems offers more advantages such as higher biomass productivity and better control, and more importantly, higher revenue offsets the higher capital cost and production costs. Looking at the current stage, despite the many advances, this technology is not yet economically feasible. To be economical, microalgal biomass production capacity should be increased to 10 to the power 4 kilotons per year. That is an increase of almost 95% of the current production. And also, the production cost should come below 59 cents per kilogram of biomass. However, the current technology is not sufficient to reduce production cost below $1.18 per kilogram. Therefore, many process modifications are required to achieve the desired cost and production capacity. This is where flue gas becomes an important factor. Since flue gas contains high levels of CO2, it increases the carbon accessibility, thus reducing the cost significantly while reducing the CO2 emissions to atmosphere. Combining this with other process modifications, the desired levels for economic feasibility will be able to achieve in the near future. Now let's discuss about the life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment covers every aspect of the process regarding their respective impact on the environment. In here, we look at three main parameters, which are the net greenhouse gas emissions, net energy ratio, and water footprint to evaluate each cultivation system. When considering the net greenhouse gas emission, in general, closed systems has the highest greenhouse gas emission compared to open systems. However, using recycled water and wastewater can significantly reduce the CO2 emission. When we look at the net energy ratio, which is the ratio between energy created to energy consumed, open systems are way better in terms of net energy ratio. Therefore, open systems are considerably more profitable and sustainable. This is a main reason to why the open systems are used for the majority of the large-scale microalgal plants. However, when the water footprint is considered, open systems use a significantly higher amount of water than the closed systems. But recycling harvest water and using undiluted wastewater can reduce the water footprint dramatically. Therefore, although the open systems are much better in terms of the life cycle assessment, there are more information that we need to understand. This leads to the final section of the presentation where we discuss the future aspects of CO2 sequestration by microalgae. At first glance, we can identify that neither cultivation system is inherently better. But carbon dioxide in flue gas increase the carbon accessibility which has a major favorable impact on the economic feasibility and also on the environment. From this review, we are left with two options when cultivating microalgae. The open systems have the advantage of low cost and low greenhouse gas emissions while maintaining a higher net energy ratio. Therefore, open systems are more suitable for CO2 sequestration. Also, closed systems have the advantage of high productivity and low footprint. But due to higher cost involved, closed systems are not suitable to use only for CO2 sequestration. The closed systems should be employed to produce high value products from microalgal biomass to compensate the higher cost. Before we end the presentation, I would like to make note that future research regarding the integration of wastewater treatment to the microalgae cultivation, further improving the use of flue gas at source, and also improving the microalgae species using genetic engineering would enable this technology to be used effectively at large scale. 
CO2 sequestration by microalgae enables us to move towards a greener world, which would make our lives better while preserving this planet for many generations to come. Thank you.